Hello and a very good evening everyone and welcome to this impromptu live read show. <laughs> I'm calling it a show, I don't know if it is a show but this live read show and today I wanted to just bring you another of the short stories from Ted Chang's collection Stories of Your Life and Others and today I will be reading The Evolution of Human Science and this is a remarkably short I'm not even sure if you can call it a story. It's only two and a half pages, and so I've got a bit of time now. I thought I'd come on and share it with you, and that will leave us only two, three, sorry, three of Ted Chang's stories, Understand, 72 Letters, and Liking What You See, a documentary. So if any of those are on your radar or are calling out to you, let me know in the comments, and I'll get that. Uh, coming soon to the channel but yes the evolution of human science is a very short little story here and I'll just read a brief synopsis about what it is or the plot summary it says the story does not have any characters the progress in the future has split humanity into two classes ordinary people and so-called metahumans who are genetically modified and have a much more powerful intelligence than do ordinary people. The development of the metahumans is science becomes so advanced that it forces the ordinary scientists to switch to interpreting and decoding the metahumans' achievements because common people are no longer able to create anything fundamentally new. The science then becomes the means of seeking and establishing communication with the super-intelligent metahuman. So, another very interesting storyline there from Ted Chang, and it sounds like he's he draws from a few influences. It sounds a bit like the splitting off of humanity into two different species. You can find that in H.G. Wells's Time Machine, where the time traveller meets um, the Eloy and the Morlocks and also it sounds as though maybe Elon Musk's um, neural link plays a role as well in the influence because um, according to people who talk a lot and think a lot about Elon Musk's neural link he's they seem to think that when an individual has that chip implanted into their brain that they will sort of become superhuman or what Ted Chang says here, metahuman. But we're going to get into that shortly. And hello there, MG's Gatcha Life. Hello, sir. Welcome to this impromptu stream. I'm glad you were on YouTube and could come and join. And as always, if you value what I'm doing here at Book Club, make sure you like this video and are subscribed to the channel. Say hello in the chat. And there's many ways you can support me here at Book Club. The easiest way and best way actually would be to share this link on your socials and far and wide across all of social media. You can also join the Patreon Book Club community where we can discuss all the marvellous ideas in Ted Chang's stories and all the other ideas that you might happen to want to discuss but are at a loss of individuals who enjoy these deep philosophical ideas you can send a donation through paypal or another easy way is the super chats and just as a reminder tomorrow i will be reading anne of green gables which i know many of you are very excited about and i am too and i need to think of a different word than excited because i say it a hell of a lot excited 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 so um enthused about it but we'll be reading that tomorrow night at eight but to, for now the evolution of human science by ted chiang it has been 25 years since a report of original research was last submitted to our editors for publication making this an appropriate time to revisit the question that was so widely debated then what is the role of human scientists in an age when the frontiers of scientific inquiry have moved beyond the comprehension of humans? No doubt many of our subscribers remember reading papers whose authors were the first individuals ever to obtain the results described. 
But as metahumans began to dominate experimental research, they increasingly made their findings available only via DNT, digital neural transfer. Again, coming back to Elon Musk's idea there, and also um, artificial intelligence, you could probably read into this as well. Leaving journals to publish second-hand accounts translated into human language. Without DNT, humans could not fully grasp prior developments nor effectively utilize the new tools needed to conduct research, while metahumans continued to improve DNT, digital neural transfer, and rely on it even more. Journals for human audiences were reduced to vehicles of popularization and poor ones at that, as even the most brilliant humans found themselves puzzled by translations of the latest findings. No one denies the many benefits of metahuman science, but one of its costs to human researchers was the realization that they would likely never make an original contribution to science again. Some left the field altogether, but those who stayed shifted their attention away from original research and towards hermeneutics, or sorry, hermeneutics, interpreting the scientific work of metahumans. Textual hermeneutics Textual hermeneutics became popular first since there were already terabytes of metahuman publications whose translations, while cryptic, were presumably not entirely inaccurate. Deciphering these texts bears little resemblance to the task performed by traditional paleographers, but progress continues. Recent experimenters have validated the Humphreys decipherment of decade-old publications on histocompatibility genetics. The availability of devices based on metahuman science gave rise to artifact hermeneutics. Hermeneutics, I think you pronounce it anyway. It's a difficult word. Scientists began attempting to reverse engineer these artifacts, their goal being not to manufacture competing products, but simply to understand the physical principles underlying their operation. The most common techniques, technique is the crystallographic analysis of nanoware appliances, which frequently provides us with new insights into mechanosynthesis. The newest and by far the most speculative mode of inquiry is remote sensing of metahuman research facilities. A recent target of investigation is the Exocollider, recently installed beneath the Gobi Desert, whose puzzling neutrino signature has been the subject of much controversy. The portable neutrino detector is, of course, another metahuman artifact whose operating principles remain elusive. The question is, are these worthwhile undertakings for scientists? Some call them a waste of time, likening them to a Native American research effort into bronze smelting when steel tools of European manufacture are readily available. This comparison might be more apt if humans were in competition with metahumans, but in today's economy of abundance there is no evidence of such competition. In fact, it is important to recognize that, unlike most previous low-technology cultures confronted with a high-technology one, humans are in no danger of assimilation or extinction. There is still no way to augment a human brain into a metahuman one. The Sugimoto gene therapy must be performed before the embryo begins neurogenesis in order for a brain to be compatible with DNT. This lack of an assimilation mechanism means that human parents of a metahuman child face a difficult choice to allow their child DNT interaction with metahuman culture and watch their child grow incomprehensible to them or else restrict access to DNT during the child's formative years, which to a metahuman is deprivation like that suffered by Caspar Horser. It is not surprising that the percentage of human parents choosing the Sugimoto gene therapy for their children has dropped almost to zero in recent years. As a result, human culture is likely to survive well into the future, and the scientific tradition is a vital part of that culture. Hermeneutics, 
or hermeneutics, is a legitimate method of scientific inquiry and increases the body of human knowledge just as original, original research did. Moreover, human researchers may discern applications overlooked by metahumans whose advantages tend to make them unaware of our concerns. For example, imagine, imagine if research offered hope of a different intelligence-enhancing therapy, one that would allow individuals to gradually upgrade their minds to a metahuman equivalent level. Such a therapy would offer a bridge across what has become the greatest cultural divide in our species' history, yet it might not even occur to metahumans to explore it. That possibility alone justifies the continuation of human research. We need not be intimidated by the accomplishments of metahuman science. We should always remember that the technologies that made metahumans possible were originally invented by humans, and they were no smarter than we. And that is the end of yes i'm not sure if we can even call it a short story but it is a short story and it's a story about the evolution of human science and yeah i'll just reiterate a bit of what i was saying at the beginning because it's just a short stream this evening we'll have a much longer one tomorrow evening for anne of green gables but i'll just uh, reiterate what i was saying before if you read the Time Machine by H.G. Wells, which you can find on the channel, you'll see um, how wonderfully he expresses the um, splitting, the divergence of humanity into two separate species, the Morlocks and the Eloi, or the, um, the elite and the working class, I suppose, that's how he portrays it, and he really portrays that very nicely. And then you've got uh, Elon Musk's neural link which he's developing you've also got artificial intelligence which I think is, there's an element of that in there that these people the um, programmers who program the the YouTube algorithm the Google all the social media algorithms are, are supposedly they don't even understand the algorithm they just program it and it sort of runs itself no one would be able to explain to you all the nuts and bolts of what it actually does and uh, Sam Harris also Elon Musk and many others are, are terrified of artificial intelligence when it goes online when it's let out the box I think is the terminology once it once it goes out into the world and there's no way to put it back in the box yeah many people are terrified about that because once it's uh, online there's nothing one can do to stop it if it decides there's an interesting thought experiment i think it's called the the paperclip problem or something along those lines and again i'm no expert on these things but i just listen to a lot of podcasts and like to read a lot of books and articles and so i educate myself in that way but that's a very interesting thing to think about right what would you do if people with the neural link are way ahead would you i mean he calls them their metahumans would you want your child to be a metahuman so that they can um so that they can compete with the other metahumans or would you like them to just be a normal human you know a, a lesser species sort of like the neanderthal to the metahuman and so yeah just very interesting idea there from ted chang we've got three more short stories to read from this book and then it will be finished and it will go on my pile where I've got all the books I've read live on the channel but that was it for this evening I just wanted to jump on like I say an impromptu stream and let me know if any of those are um, interesting for you or any of the three books that I mentioned at the beginning that we have left to read and also if you've thought anything about um any of those topics covered artificial intelligence elon musk's neural link or hg wells's um bifurcation of humanity any of those let me know in the comments alternatively you can come over to uh the patreon book club community and we can have some in-depth conversations through that um that framework over there patreon and I'd love to discuss these things further because I'm very interested. I know that many people aren't interested in these sort of things, but I am. 
and I'd like to be available to any of my subscribers here at Book Club if they are keen to discuss these things but uh, are at a loss of people to discuss them with, head over to the Patreon Book Club community and we can begin a, uh, yeah, a discussion, a conversation and get into these ideas and uh, RB, you're very welcome and don't forget guys, tomorrow at 8, Anne of Green Gables, very interested and infused and looking forward to that and so yeah guys uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and i'll see you tomorrow and i'm looking forward to reading that book it's going to be in three parts probably so part one um it's the patreon book club community rb if you look in the description section there'll be a link to you uh, patreon book club community and there's also a syllabus on there so if you like reading but i'm not sure what great books of history and philosophy and religion uh yes sammy smith hello there nice to see you sammy smith um so yeah uh, both of you rb and sammy smith if if you join the the patron book club community i will yeah there's a, a private chat function that you can begin a, a conversation a discussion there and then through that we can jump on to a another forum it, that might be easier for you or myself and I look forward to discussing uh, any ideas that you guys might want to converse about so yeah head over there and join up and we can chat away and get deep and philosophical through the chat function but now guys enjoy the rest of your evening I hope that you'll be able to join me tomorrow and uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.